Hi, this is Avelinda from Dimension Ninja. With the recent news about actor Bruce Willis' aphasia diagnosis, today we will focus about the semantic variant of frontotemporal dementia, also known as FTD, frontal lobe dementia, or PICS disease. Stay until the end and I will give you some pointers on caring for someone with FTD. According to John Hopkins University course, while dementia usually occurs at a later age, FTD is the third most common type of dementia for people between 45 and 65 years old, although there had been cases as early as 20 or as late as 80 years old. Clumps of abnormal protein form inside brain cells of frontal and temporal lobes. These lobes are responsible mostly for language and behavior control. Brain cells with abnormal protein cause FTD and the death of nerve cells. FTD is much more likely to run in families than the more common forms of dementia. Around 1 in 8 people with FTD will have relatives who were also affected by the condition, which means there is a very clear pattern of inheritance of FTD from one generation to the next. Frontotemporal dementia affects men and women roughly equally. FTD affects every patient differently. Its symptoms vary a lot and depend on which areas of the frontal and temporal lobes are affected and the type of FTD the patient has. Based on the symptoms manifested, frontotemporal dementia is divided into three categories. A person with behavioral variant FTD may lose motivation to do things that they used to enjoy or struggle to focus on tasks and become distracted easily. They may find it difficult to plan, organize, and make decisions with work or with managing money. They may lose the ability to understand what others might be thinking or feeling, may be less considerate of the needs of others, lose interest in social activities, or be less friendly. They may also have lesser sense of humor or may laugh at other people's problems. They may have repetitive or obsessive behaviors. Or they may crave sweet, fatty foods or carbohydrates and forget their table manners. May also no longer know when to stop eating, drinking alcohol or smoking. Most people with behavioral variant FTD are not fully aware of their symptoms, resulting in rarely thinking they need to seek medical help for their condition, or they may refuse to undergo if somebody suggests it. These can cause long delays in getting an accurate diagnosis. There are two types of primary progressive aphasia. One is semantic variant and the other is non-fluent variant. About one in five people with semantic variant PPA causes a person to forget the meaning of words. Although the main symptoms of semantic variant PPA involve language, the condition usually also causes changes in behavior. They may lose their vocabulary over time. They may become less familiar with technical words or less common words and may try to use more general words. As their condition develops, even basic words will be hard for them to remember. They may forget what familiar objects are used for. A patient may forget what a toaster does and the reason why it's in the kitchen. They may lose the skills to use everyday objects such as cutlery or toothbrush.
Unlike those with semantic variant PPA, many people with non-fluent variant PPA still understand individual words. However, they will find it more and more difficult to get their words out over time. They may start to speak differently, speak more slowly, use the wrong grammar, and put words in the wrong order. They may use shorter, simpler sentences known as telegraphic speech. They may say the opposite of what they mean. Over time, they will struggle to understand full sentences, making it difficult for the person to have a conversation and which make the situation frustrating and isolating. And at some point, the person with non-fluent variant PPA may stop speaking completely. Blood tests and a full physical examination are important to rule out other possible causes of symptoms. Scans are used to see what parts of the brain are most damaged. They can also rule out other possible causes of a person's symptoms, such as a stroke or tumor. Any further tests are needed, more specialized brain scans will be carried out, including a lumbar puncture. Genetic counseling will always be offered before a test. These tests can show if the person's condition is caused by a specific faulty gene and the knowledge obtained can help the specialist to make a more precise diagnosis and to better understand the changes that are happening in the person's brain. After a person dies, it is possible to make a more certain diagnosis of FTD because the brain can be seen directly in post-mortem examinations. Unfortunately, like other types of dementias, FTD is a progressive disease with no cure. Its progression cannot be slowed down and the speed of decline will be different for each person. Drugs that are commonly used to treat other types of dementia are not recommended for people with FTD. These drugs must be used with caution because the side effects include an increased risk of death in people with FTD. When the patient has problems with coordination or movement, support from a physiotherapist or occupational therapist may be of help. Support groups can offer useful advice and emotional support to people living with FTD and those who care for them. Spending time with other people in this way can also help if a person with FTD seems to lose motivation in things or appears bored or lonely. FTD will eventually cause a person to have difficulty with essential bodily functions like chewing, swallowing, moving around, and controlling the bladder and bowels. These changes can cause serious infections in the lungs, urinary tract, and skin, leading to death. As carer for someone with dementia, please bear in mind that a patient with FTD has very little control over their actions. If the patient wants a fixed routine or obsess over an activity, it may be best to let them do so. For awkward or embarrassing situations, it would be less stressful for everybody to accept socially inappropriate behavior as part of the condition rather than confront the person. Remove any potential triggers such as noise or crowded environment. Ask questions about a complete different topic to distract the person from difficult behavior. 
Before considering any drug treatments like administration of antipsychotics, physical exercise, music, or any other types of activities that the person enjoys or finds useful are most effective in helping a person with FTD to maintain a good quality of life. And lastly, the person with FTD should be referred to a specialist who can advise on the risks and benefits of taking medications. Thank you for watching. My mother and I wish you well.